Hi friends, I have been fond of power electronics for a long time, in particular pulsed sources and often faced with lack of components. Unfortunately, in my town there are no radio component stores, so I often buy components at AliExpress. Yes, at AliExpress. Too much fake, but there are several normal stores that sell the original. In general, you can get original good spare parts at other sites, but a good component is always expensive. Add to all this what I very often assembling different power sources and experiment with them. During this, naturally power transistors could burn. If in the circuit you have several transistors and each costs five to ten dollars, then a few unsuccessful experiments will ruin family budget. On AliExpress is certainly cheaper, but there is always a risk to get a fake. Do you want your homemade products to be the same as the factory ones? Then you need high-quality printed circuit boards, which PCBWay will produce for you at affordable prices. Just download the source Gerber files from the company's website, select the options you need, pay for the order, and soon your boards will be ready. The complexity, number of layers, and board sizes can be anything. PCBWay often holds contests and sweepstakes. Follow the news to keep track of the events. We were personally convinced of the quality. Try it too. The link is in the description. One fine day, one of the subscribers who wished to remain anonymous wrote to me and offered to send a mega ultra cool parcel with radio components. A few days later, the parcel was in my hands, and the contents of this parcel would cause a shock to those who are in the subject. Want to find what was there? A true paradise for a person who is fond of impulse devices. Let's start with a simple one. A bunch of high-voltage capacitors K5068 at 450 volts, 330 microfarad. These are electrolytes that are used in power supplies after the input rectifier. Apparently, they are in excellent condition both in internal resistance and in capacity and leakage. That is, I will not have problems with high-voltage electrolytes in the near future. Next are also electrolytes but at relatively low voltage at 63 volts with a capacity of as much as 10,000 microfarads. They can be used in powerful linear sources as a power filter, in low-frequency amplifiers, etc. Of course, such electrolytes will quickly find application. The characteristics are also excellent. The internal resistance is quite low, so everything is fine. I forgot to say that most of the components are used, but it doesn't matter. The advantage is that exclusively all the components in this package are original and they are from top manufacturers. Now, look at all together. All this was beautifully signed and packaged, but I mixed everything for more effect and scale. All these components are intended for use in pulsed power supplies, welding inverters, frequency converters, and in high-frequency induction heaters. Let's start with the most impressive. This is a powerful 600-volt IGBT scheme 300GB063D module for as many as 400 amps, a monster of unprecedented power with an internal 250 amps reverse diode. Yes, it is a transistor with an internal high-speed diode. Such models are used in high-frequency ovens, powerful frequency converters, and inverters. Another monster, CM200DY-24A, manufactured by Mitsubishi, Japan. This is an IGBT assembly of 1,200 volts with a current of as much as 200 amps. Inside is a pair of IGBT transistors. Judging by the datasheet, this monster can dissipate about 1,350 watts of power. Given that I have two of them. I can build induction heater for 10 to 15 kilowatt and even more. GA200SA60U is 600 volt, 100 amps IGBT transistor from one of the leading manufacturers, International Rectifier. The power dissipated by the transistor is half a kilowatt and I have two pieces. The VS-403CNQ100PBF is powerful. 
although powerful isn't the right word, a super powerful dual Schottky diode with a reverse voltage of 100 volt and a current of as much as 400 amps. The housing include two diodes with a common cathode on the substrate. One such assembly is enough to build the output rectifier of a powerful welding inverter. This will give a huge margin for welding. This assembly can withstand shock currents about 20 to 25,000 amps. The total number of is 5 pieces. By the way, they are perhaps from the most popular manufacturer, Vichy Intertechnology. These are the other diodes, 203C MQ100. Inside also is a pair of Schottky diodes and also with a common cathode, but the output of cathode has an ordinary third contact. This assembly is for 100 volt and current 100 amps, very good for welding. The total number is two pieces. Some time ago I made a welding inverter and suffered for a long time with the power diodes of the rectifier. They look like this. Now I have enough suitable diodes. The 85EPF12 is a powerful ultra-fast single diode with a reverse voltage of as much as 1200 volts and a current of 100 amperes. For one such diode, an eBay seller asked from 10 to 12 dollars. I have about 50 of them. Such diodes are universal because they have high reverse voltage. They can be used in the input circuit at the high voltage line in the output circuits as powerful rectifiers and of course as reverse diodes in the protection circuits from voltage surges and so on. On this the diodes don't finish. There is also the HFA30PB120 for 30 amps ultra fast reverse voltage of 1200 volts often used in welding inverters. Here are another diodes that don't differ in current and voltage from the previous one, only they are even faster. The reverse recovery time is only 20 nanoseconds. Now we again look at transistors, this time in a more familiar housing. Almost all are IGBD transistors. The IRG7PSH73K10 from Infine, high voltage of 1.2 kV, collector current is 75 amps, and maximum dissipation power 580 watt. In general, given the type of housing, these are some of the best transistors today. One such transistor is enough to build a welding device with an output current of 150 amps, and there are a lot of them in the parcel. IRG4PH50U is a high voltage IGBT for 1200 volts, 24 amps current, and such a monster is also enough for a welding inverter. There are such 40 amps IGBTs also at 1.2 kV. In general, it's difficult to lose everything. In addition to these components, the parcel contains three packages. In particular, the first package are low resistance powerful resistors and inductances. It's very useful, especially resistors. They can always be used as a current sensor or for a line. In the second package are microchips of pulse stabilizers, all kinds of LM temperature sensor, diode rectifiers, powerful 5 watts linear diodes, LEDs, octocouplers and something else, an optical driver for controlling power transistors. I previously came across these newfangled things but for some reason I didn't dare to implement them in my devices. I prefer the old way, the usual driver based on specialized microcircuits, emitter repeater and galvanic isolation transformer. Such opti drivers have a lot of advantages. They are compact, can control powerful transistors and also provide galvanic isolation of the control system from the high voltage part. Among all these, there are quite cool photo transistors. The third package has also a lot of interesting things. Here, Japanese miniature relays are striking, and these are ready-made transformers. To be honest, I still don't understand exactly what kind of transformers they are, but I think that these small ones are transformers for galvanic isolation, and the large ones from sources on duty. In any case, the core here is armored in the form of two cups. I can rewind all these to my needs. 
And that's not all. There were also these beauties, REP26-003 intermediate relays with a 24-volt coil. In general, these are quite powerful relays which now cost a lot of money. These relays have a group of contacts and can be used for a variety of tasks. RPK21 is polarized relay. This is a rather interesting type of relay which is able to remember its state. When voltage is applied to the coil, the relay is triggered and even if the voltage is removed, the relay will remain in this state. Inside such a relay are two coils with contact groups. The relay is at 4 amps and the coil voltage is 24. For such a relay can be found a lot of applications, for example to protect something, because the principle of operation of this relay is the same as that of the trigger latch. If you aren't tired, then I will continue. The main part of the induction oven is an oscillatory circuit, which consists of a bank of capacitors and an inductor. Moreover, capacitors and induction heaters aren't ordinary ones, but a special class. They must operate under monstrous loads and at high frequencies. And yes, in the package there are such capacitors from one of the top manufacturers of EPCOs. These are high voltage capacitors with a voltage of 1250 volts, a capacity of 1 microfarad. The amount is 10 pieces. These are good capacitors and specifically designed to work in high frequency circuits. They have a screw type mounting method, all in working condition. There is also such a thing. This is a current transformer. Judging by the size, it is designed to work in powerful sources, for example, in induction systems or industrial welding inverters. What do I intend to do with all these goods? There is everything I need to build a powerful induction heater, only need to control properly the frequency by auto-tuning. The project will be difficult, but considering the presence of power components, I think it's worth a try. Small but powerful IGBT transistors I intend to use in electronic load. Boards for them are already ordered at the factory and will be here soon. It is planned to start with a load of 5 kW. Of course, I can find another application for these transistors, but I have a lot of them. So a couple of dozen pieces will use for the electronic load. Quite a long time ago I created this source, a pulse starter charger for a car. I made it purely for tests and adjustments as a breadboard version. Everything works as it should. This device is with the stabilization of current and voltage and the maximum output current is 50 amps. I intend to make a second more powerful 200 amps version, but before I didn't have the suitable power components. Now I have them, so the project will finally go on. Up to drivers will be used for experiments. I will study all the nuances and make power sources based on them. There are also intentions to build a frequency converter for powerful induction motor. In general, there are a lot of ambitions and I want to do everything at once, but I perfectly understand that it will take months to realize all this. About the parcel, of course, these components cost a lot of money, but nowadays there are people for whom money is far from being the most important thing. The person decided to help the channel and me personally for free. Simply to say, thanks. Of course, it is not enough, but I can't find other words. Parcels from viewers come to me quite often, and if you are interested in such a theme, leave your feedback in the comments, and there may be a continuation. Now I say goodbye, until we meet again. With you as always was Kassian TV.